Hey guys, it's Kato here, and this is part two of a two-part series all about stems. So I had to explain what stems were to a lot of clients lately, so I actually made a page on my website all about stems and how to print them out, and so I figured I'd share that information with you guys. So last time we talked about what stems are and what they're useful for, and this time we're going to go into more detail about how to print stems out. So let's go. <laughs> All right guys, so keep in mind that this is the second video in a two-part series. So the first one we talked about what stems are and what they're useful for. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to print stems, which is what we call making stems. So it's also good to keep in mind that I'm speaking from the perspective of a mixing engineer, right? So different people, depending on who you're sending the stems to, might want the stems broken down to different degrees. And a mixing engineer might want more control. So they might want more stems for the same session and then say someone who's just remixing it for TV or film. So that's another good thing to keep in mind. The concept of stems remains the same, but I am speaking from the perspective of a mixing engineer prim primarily. So um, another thing to keep in mind is that I'm just gonna tell you the basic idea of how to print stems today. So you probably wanna go look at more detailed instructions for your specific DAW, because it's gonna be slightly different from program to program. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is that I am basically just gonna be going over a handout that I already made and it's available on my website for free. So it's just a page on my website and I'll link to that in the description below. Okay, so how to print stems. So first of all, you wanna figure out how many stems, how many tracks you're going to be sending out. So you wanna get organized. You wanna start thinking about how specific you're going to wanna get with your track breakdown, right? And you wanna keep in mind that if your collaborator is anything like me, then they're gonna probably want at least one audio file for each track, so a clean version minus effects, and at least two files for each MIDI track, so one audio and one MIDI uh, file, right? And so that's the bare minimum. And you want to send over uh, clean versions of all the audio tracks. So by clean, I mean um, they don't have any effects on them. So no EQ, no compression. And it's like, unless you're really, really, really sure that you want those effects in there, just uh, leave them out. Have them be a separate stem if you want to include them. So you won't want to have any EQ, compression, reverb, stuff like that. No effects. If you really want to send over effects, for those audio tracks. So for example, one clean vocal track and one track with just the reverb for that vocal on it, then you'll wanna make separate stems just for that. I also recommend removing any automation that you have on your tracks. So for example, volume automation, panning automation, stuff like that, you're gonna wanna completely remove it. If Also, if you have any MIDI tracks in your session, I'll want one MIDI file and one audio file for that MIDI track. So you're gonna have two things for each MIDI track. And I ask for these two versions because I want the audio file so that I can reference what kind of sound you're trying to create with that MIDI track. But I also might wanna replace your sounds or augment your sounds using that MIDI file, so it's important to include both. Okay, so next what you should do is you should consolidate your tracks. So consolidate is a term that we commonly use. It's used across multiple DAWs and it's for a specific function. So for the purpose of stems, what we're gonna use it for is to modify all these audio files that are within your track so that they all start at the same point in time. And again, that's so that your collaborator can line them up within Pro Tools or whatever DAW they're using. It's basically so that they can easily line things up and get going quickly. So it's a really important step to take. If you don't take the step that it's, you know, you're going to have to go into like time code and where to start things or, you know, put a placing clips properly, stuff like that. So to consolidate your tracks, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find the end point in your session. So you're going to want to find that end point and then highlight from the end to the very beginning of your session. So it might be the zero point within your session or it might be wherever the audio starts. And then what you're going to want to do is you're you're going to want to look for that consolidate function or something that sounds similar to that. And it's usually in the edit menu. But again, you'll want to look within your specific DAW to see uh, where it is and find it. Um, and once you use that function, what it should do is everything that's been highlighted should now extend to the beginning and end of your highlight. So anything that started later in your session should now look like it starts at the beginning of your session. And so, exa for example, for audio files, it's going to look like just silence where there was no audio file before and it will extend from the beginning of your highlight until the audio file actually started. And um, that'll be just silence and then you'll see your audio file as usual. But it's gonna make it one giant audio file, right? 
And for MIDI files, it's just going to create empty data, basically. But it extends them all so that they start at the same point in time. That's the purpose. OK, so once you have all your files, so audio and MIDI extended so that they start at the same exact point in time within your session, you're ready to export your files. So you're almost done. You can either export each track one at a time, or you can figure out how to use your specific DAW to export them all at once within one function. But um, the result should be that each of these tracks should uh, be their own file, ultimately. And you're going to want to put them all in one folder that you rem remember to label, right? And a good tip is that if you're doing multiple songs, you want to create a different folder for each song so that you can kind of keep track of where everything is, what everything belongs to. Then all you have to do is send these files over to your collaborator. So you can either send them online, and if you're sending them online, I recommend using filemail.com. It's a really easy and free website to use, and there's also other services like wetransfer.com. I kind of prefer filemail.com because what they have is um, they have you can it's really easy to upload a whole folder at once, which is kind of hard with wetransfer, and it also has a higher uh, file size limit, so you can send bigger files, which is a concern when you're working with really big sessions right? So I recommend using filemail.com. Anyway, then you're all done and your collaborator can open up your stems and line them up very easily and start working on their remix or start working on your music to make it that much more awesome. And that's it, the basics on how to print stems. Remember to check out that uh, page on my website if you're a visual learner and want to read the content that we just went over today. And I hope this helps some of you guys. And for today's question, I want to know what kind of tips and recommendations do you have for printing out stems? So let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please share the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday. And thank you for watching. Okay.